Looking for the best CPU cooler for the Ryzen 7 5800X? The Ryzen 7 5800X was a fantastic mid-range CPU and it still holds up well today amidst all the new DDR5 platforms. To extract the full performance out of this chip though, you need a decent cooler. In this video, I've picked the top three coolers that offer great performance to keep your 5800X running cool. Current prices and all coolers mentioned in the video are available in the description. Let's start with the best budget CPU cooler for the 5800X, the ID Cooling Frozen A620 Pro SE. While ID Cooling isn't as big of a name as Deepcool or Thermalright, they managed to keep up in terms of performance and value with those bigger brands. The Frozen A620 Pro SE is proof of that statement, as it balances incredible performance with low noise levels. This is a very cheap cooler for what it delivers, and that's not something you see very often. The A620 Pro SE is an incremental improvement over the standard A620. This newer version features new fans that prioritize lower noise over raw airflow. It also has better RAM clearance and a lower price. Keep in mind that the standard version is still available on Amazon, however you should definitely prefer the Pro SE version. In terms of design, they went for a simple but effective look. The cooler has a dual tower heatsink design, and both fin stacks feature 56 fins. For such a cheap cooler, the fit and finish here are impressive. There's a bit of heft to this cooler, but it isn't as bulky as something like a Dark Rock Pro 5. From above, you can see the plastic matte black covers with frozen branding that hide the aluminum fins. Finally, you have a nickel-plated base and heat pipes. The provided fans have an RPM range of 300 to 2000, and they feature a simple all-black design. It's also worth mentioning here that the installation here is straightforward and similar to most other air coolers. If you're a fan of RGB lighting, ID Cooling does sell an ARGB version of the same cooler. Of course, it's slightly more expensive. Let's move on to performance now. When testing with newer CPUs like the Ryzen 9 9700X, temperatures hover at under 70 degrees in intense gaming sessions. During more intensive workloads like rendering, temperatures still manage to stay below 65 degrees. It also works well for older, less efficient CPUs like the Ryzen 7 5800X, where it manages 70 to 75 degrees in intensive tests. This sort of performance is commendable at such a cheap price. However, the noise levels are the highlight here. At 50% fan speeds, the cooler averages under 40 decibels. Similarly priced coolers, such as the Deepcool AK620 and even the higher-end Dark Rock Elite, are slightly louder at these fan speeds. During gaming, you won't be hearing this cooler at all. Competition-wise, the Thermal Ride Peerless Assassin 120SE is a strong alternative to this one. Both coolers are similarly priced, deliver identical levels of performance, and even share a similar design. Noise level is where the AK620 Pro SE is the clear winner. Just for that reason, I prefer the ID cooling option over Thermal Ride in this case. So there's not much to complain about with this cooler. The only thing of note is that it's a bit boring looking, but that's to be expected for the price tag. Otherwise, this is an affordable, high-performance cooler that gets all the basics right. Highly recommended for budget to mid-range CPUs like the 5800X. To sum up, what I like is the very affordable price, the low noise levels, and the excellent performance with most CPUs. On the downside, the design is a bit boring. Next, we have my pick for the best premium cooler for the 5800X, the NZXT Kraken 360 RGB. Gone are the days when you had to sacrifice looks for the sake of performance, or vice versa. NZXT Kraken 360 RGB not only does look great, but it also performs really well, giving you the best of both worlds. RGB? Check. LCD screen? Check. Acoustics? Check. NZXT Kraken 360 RGB ticks all of the boxes with ease. Let's dive deeper to explore them. Starting off with the box and included accessories, the cooler comes with everything you're going to need. Sockets for various chipsets are included, with the exception of AMD Threadripper, which it also supports. Along with the sockets and cables, it comes with an RGB controller that's used to control the RGB lighting and effects of the fans via the NZXT CAM software. The cooler also comes with three 120mm F120 RGB core fans from NZXT, so it doesn't cheap out there either. Moving on to the design, the cooler is minimal but quite pleasing in looks. It comes in two different colors, matte white and matte black. The pump features an embedded LCD screen that can be customized to show various details via the CAM software. 
That said, the LCD screen does not cover the entirety of the pump, at least not in this variant. NZXT offers a Kraken Elite option where the LCD screen is slightly larger, taking up all of the area. As for the radiator, it's made out of aluminum with braided nylon tubes that make for a worry-free installation. In terms of performance, the Kraken 360 is an absolute cooling solution. Under extended gaming sessions, the average temperature stays well within 65 degrees Celsius on games that are more CPU intensive, like Cyberpunk 2077. Not only that, it's able to match the performance of the ROG Ryujin 360 at a lower price, while also offering better AMD support and a much nicer looking LCD screen. Additionally, the fans offer an impressive lifespan of 6 years or around a 60,000 hours. The acoustics are also pretty nice, as you're unable to hear the fans up to 1,600 RPM. However, anything higher than that makes it more audible, with quite apparent noise at the max speed of 2,800 RPM. For installation, the cooler comes with an Intel mounting bracket pre-installed. You'll have to replace this with the included AM5 bracket to pair it with an AMD CPU. To remove the Intel bracket, simply twist the bracket and it should come right off. The overall installation is pretty easy and straightforward. However, if you are a beginner, it can be a little overwhelming since there are a lot of cables included for RGB and power. Fortunately, the manual offers detailed step-by-step -step instructions that you can reference for help. Furthermore, the cooler's support includes Intel LGA 1700 and 1200, along with AMD AM5 and AM4. The NZXT Kraken 360 weighs around 1560 grams in weight, which is a relatively normal range for AIO coolers. In addition, due to the dimensions of the radiator, you're going to need a full-sized case for the cooler. However, there are smaller radiator options available for compact cases as well. In summary, the NZXT Kraken 360 is a cooler with no compromises, giving you some of the best cooling performance with impressive overall build quality and aesthetics. There's no going wrong with this AIO from NZXT if you have the budget for it. To sum up, what I like is the superb cooling performance, the customizable LCD screen, the pre-applied thermal paste, and the braided nylon tubes. On the downside, it's a bit expensive. Lastly, the best CPU cooler for the 5800X is the Thermalrite Royal Praetor 130. For hardware enthusiasts who are always looking to improve performance without breaking the bank, Thermalrite has always been an excellent option. Their Peerless Assassin and Phantom Spirit CPU coolers are some of the best air coolers on the market, and they've outdone themselves again. The new Royal Praetor 130 is a beefy high-performance air cooler that outperforms a lot of AIOs. This cooler is a massive improvement over the already incredible Phantom Spirit 120. The Praetor 130 is designed for higher-end CPUs with TDPs upwards of 260 watts. Somehow, it's also quieter because of the optimized fan bearing and larger fan size that reduces high RPM needs. However, it is more expensive than the Phantom Spirit. Design-wise, black is the only word that comes to mind when looking at this cooler. Similar to the Noctua NHD15 Chromax Black, this is a gigantic dual-tower cooler with everything painted black. The fins, heat pipes, the fans, and even the fan clips. On top, you'll find Thermalrite branding along with their logo in the corner. An interesting thing about this cooler is that it features one 120mm and one 130mm fan, each with a thickness of 28mm. This is unusual for most air coolers, but it's a simple and effective approach for enabling more airflow. The heatsink has an overall height of 158mm, so it will fit into most ATX cases. If you have a micro ATX case, fitting this cooler will be very difficult. Ultimately, that's the main downside of this cooler. It delivers fantastic performance for the money, but people with smaller cases will have a hard time installing it. It's also worth noting that not everyone loves the look of a gigantic air cooler, so that's something to consider as well. Performance-wise, this cooler is very impressive with higher-end CPUs. With a 14700K, this cooler manages to handle wattages as high as 240 watts. Even with such high power consumption, temperatures hover at around 80 degrees. 
For more realistic real-world use, such as gaming, expect temperatures in the 60 to 65 range. Older CPUs, such as the 5800X, fare even better. This is where the cooler really shines. If you have an older chip, you can slap this cooler on, overclock it, and get exceptional performance for a very long time. This will eventually delay your CPU upgrade for a while, which is quite a big deal considering the low price. As for the maximum noise levels, this cooler tops out at 45 decibels at full fan speed. While that's considerably high, you won't be running this cooler at 100% fan speed anytime soon. The bigger, thicker fans move a lot of air, so you can easily get away with a fan speed range of 50 to 75%. With that fan profile, noise levels immediately drop to under 40 decibels. Thermal Wright released this cooler to compete with the Noctua NHD15 G2. The Noctua cooler has slightly better performance, similar low noise levels, and excellent build quality. So does the Royal Praetor 130, and it's almost three times cheaper. In my books, that's a pretty easy win for Thermal Wright. It will be hard for any other cooler to compete at this price. In conclusion, if you can manage to fit this cooler in your case, you'll be a very happy customer. The sheer size will steer some people away, but if you go with it, you'll get chart-topping performance at a very reasonable price. To sum up, what I like is the highly aggressive price, the unparalleled performance for the money, the reasonable noise levels, and the clean all-black design. On the downside, it won't work with most micro ATX cases. Thanks for staying till the end. Remember, you can check current prices in the description below.